Hey, what's up YouTube? Jeremiah Hersey here. Welcome back to the next PL300 test prep question. Today we're going to be looking at a question that is related to basket analysis and how to optimize the model for that. So basket analysis is a way to look at how products are linked together through purchases. And in today's question, we're going to be seeing how they relate to the sales territory. So it's asking us to optimize the model. And so there's going to be several questions related to that. Let's go ahead and get started. The question says you are creating a Power BI imported data model to perform basket analysis. The goal of the analysis is to identify which products are usually bought together in the same transaction across and within sales territories. You import a fact table named sales shown in the following exhibit. And so you can see that we have several columns available with a sales row ID, product key, order date key, an order date, customer key, a sales territory key, and so on and so forth. And so it gives us a description down here. It says the related dimension tables are imported into the model and sales contains the data shown in the following table. And so remember that our goal here is to analyze which products are sold together across sales territories. So with that goal in mind, we have to kind of identify what's going to be important here for performing this basket analysis. And so as we look at our table here, as we look at sales row ID, it's just labeling the row that it's in, one, two, three, and so on. And so that's not necessarily really something that is important, but we are dealing with products. So it asks us to identify products based on their sales territory. So the product key is going to be important here with inside this question. And we also see the sales territory key as well. And so, while we're focused in on the products sold in the sales territory that they're associated with, that's what the question specifically asks. We have to make sure that we don't eliminate any other information that might be beneficial to that analysis. And so as we think about the line total and the tax amount and freight, that might also be necessary for our analysis so we can see not only the products that are sold together, but potentially also how much we made as well or how much it costs us to send that product. We also see some basic quantities here. So we see the order quantity that just the preview shows one, but that order quantity could be more than one if they ordered more than one product. And we also have a sales order line number as well. So that's referencing the order, the lines with inside of that order. So this is just the first line is going to reference that information. If we look over on the right hand side, we're also going to see a last modified date and an audit ID, which look to be the same information repeated over again. So not really going to do much for us, but Let's go ahead and look through the description of the sales table. So the sales row ID is the ID of the row from the source system, which represents a unique combination of sales order number and the sales order line number. We have a product key, which relates to the product dimension. So this is going to be important here because we're analyzing products that are sold together across specific sales territories. We have an order date key, which relates to a date dimension. We also have the date and the time, which is essentially the same as the order date key. It's just related and you can see that up here. It's just a basic date format for the order date key. And the order date is the same. It's just set up in a date time format with that time being zero. We have a customer key that relates to a customer dimension sales territory key relates to a sales territory dimension. This is also going to be important for us because we're analyzing products that are sold together across those sales territories. We have the sales order number, which is a unique identifier of the order and the order line number, which is the lines within order. 
the order quantity, the total amount before tax, our taxable amount, our freight, our last modified date, and also that audit ID as well. So let's look at the question down below. It says you are evaluating how to optimize the model for each of the following statements. Select yes if it's true, otherwise select no. So the sales row ID and audit ID columns can be removed from the model without impeding the analysis goal. So as we look at what those are, so remember the sales row ID is just labeling the row, so one, two, three, four, and so on. And the audit ID was that repeated number 127 at the end. Those really don't have an impact as to what we're trying to do. We're trying to analyze products that are sold together across sales territory. And so, yes, they can be removed because they are not going to impede the analysis goal because they're not really important for what we're trying to do. The next one says both the order date key and order date columns are necessary to perform the basket analysis. So as we think about what the basket analysis is, so the basket analysis is to determine which products are sold together across and within the sales territory. So that's our goal, to determine which products are sold together across and within the sales territory. It didn't specifically say anything based upon the date. It didn't say within a certain time frame or a range of dates. We're simply looking at which products are sold together as they're associated to the sales territory. And so both the, the question saying both the order date key and order date are necessary to perform the basket analysis now, could they be beneficial? Yes, potentially, but are they necessary? That's the key here. And these are not necessary to perform the analysis, so the correct option would be no. The last statement says the tax amount column must retain the current number of decimal places to perform the basket analysis. So as we look at the tax amount here, it's saying that do we have to retain the number of decimal places to perform the basket analysis. Remember that the goal here is to look at which products are bought together in the same transaction across and within sales territories. So is this necessary to retain the tax amount? And so as we look at our answer choices down here, once again, this keyword being must. The tax column must retain the current number of decimal places to perform basket analysis. That is going to be no. So the correct answers here would be yes, we can remove sales row ID and audit ID columns. The order date and order date key are not necessary. That's the keyword here. They are not necessary, but they could be beneficial but they are not necessary. And once again, the tax amount column must retain the current number of decimal places. That is going to be no. They do not necessarily have to retain the current number of decimal places to perform this basket analysis. I wanna thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.